what you're really dealing with, number one, you, we got a breach border. And the longer that that border stays breached, more terrorists can infiltrate out into the South and do what they're doing now in these cities and hamlets uh, and either pulling uh, um, hostages out or causing havoc in the city. So we must, Israel must get the border sealed. And as we sit here right now, I do not believe that border is sealed. Number two, have to destroy the terrorist groups that are inside these, these cities pretty quickly because the way of life of the Israelis are, are being destroyed right now. And so they have to get a handle on that. Number three, they have to watch the West Bank. We do know that uh, there are Palestinian terrorist groups that could perhaps come out of the West Bank to join this fight. Don't think they will, but still, it is a possibility. Number four, they have to watch Hezbollah up north. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind, I don't know this for a fact, that Hezbollah probably was made aware of this. And so we have to watch the Hezbollah to ensure that they do not try and join this fight as well. You started. And then we, I'm After sorry. You. Go ahead. No, go ahead, sir. And then the hostage situation it is a situation that the Israelis have never found themselves in inside of, of Gaza. They're going to have to figure out, number one, how to get the human and intelligence going to where they can find these hostages, get special operation forces in there, and perhaps uh, get a ground force movement in there. But I think they got to get their intelligence to be able to find the location of these hostages, because Hamas will probably decentralize these hostages. They'll probably constantly move them. Uh, to throw the Israelis off, so it's critical that they get their intelligence going to be able to find these hostages pretty quickly. Clint, I want to pick up on two things that General Twitty has said. The first being that Hamas did not wake up today and decide to execute this attack. This was well planned. It was well orchestrated. That then means that there was an intelligence failure, right? There was an intelligence failure on the part of Israeli intelligence that did not pick up on the planning that was going on for however long it was. And then I also want to pick up on this piece about the fact that we now have an active hostage situation. There is movement among those hostages. The role that intelligence can play at this point? Yeah, Alicia, just to, from the failure point, I mean, it's 50 years from the uh, 1973 war. It, it is really not a surprise in terms of the date that they might pick. Separately, just that they were able to move this many weapons into place, move this many personnel into place. They had to be communicating. What is known uh, usually about the Israeli intelligence is they have strong penetration of all networks, both human and signals inside of Gaza and outside of Gaza. They're known for that. So this is a remarkable misstep and, and failure on their part that they, they did not pick up on this earlier. I think the second point is though, moving forward, you will see several different things happen. First, they're gonna be employing all of their technical and uh, human intelligence and surveillance capabilities, which are vast, by the way, on the Gaza Strip. The next thing is they've got to secure those areas uh, that General Trinity was talking about, which are still unsecured areas, uh, towns where there may be Hamas infiltrators in, and closing up the borders to some degree, or otherwise they're just not in a strong position to really isolate the problem and try and work on the hostage situation. Then I think third, uh, they're gonna be using every network that they have inside Gaza uh, to try and locate where these individuals are at. Reminder, this is all spread at a time where uh, Iran has been uh, a constant antagonist of Israel in many ways. And in recent times, they back Hamas. Look at the bigger uh, scheme here in the Middle East right now. You had normalization of relations uh, between Israel and UAE. There was lots of work towards uh, normalizations between Israel and Saudi Arabia. This puts a lot of pressure on some of these extremist groups to act. And this is also a time where internal in Israel, you have a lot of domestic uh, uh, conflict going on between different groups, uh, activist groups, protest, and, and so not strong unity. So it's not really a surprise that this happened at the moment because there are a lot of forces that were leading to the conflict that we saw today. Well, to that point, uh, General Twitty, Ukraine, Ukrainian President Zelensky today calling for accountability for Hamas's attack on Israel, stating Israel's right to defend itself with all eyes on Israel. How does this attack then impact Putin's war on Ukraine? Yeah, I, I would say that uh, perhaps uh, as your previous uh, um, 
uh, visitor talked about. I think it was uh, Alex Benman that was up. Uh, I don't share his pessimistic, pessimistic view about things raveling. Uh, Russia could have uh, known about this particular attack. I don't know whether the Iranians uh, informed them of, of that. But I see the uh, what's going on in Ukraine at this point in time.